I hope you're well. Come to my park again, because another thought popped into my head. And this one is about a choice I subconsciously made when I was a young child. Um, I didn't know it as I did it then. I've only really become aware of it as I've grown up. Um, but essentially the choice was where I got my motivation from. And this one is I get my motivation externally. And that primarily means I get it from seeking to please other people. Okay, I need other people to see me as a success, and that is my motivator. That's my external motivator. Or I can get internal motivation, which is this one, dodgy drawings again. <laughs> the, and here the idea is the internal motivator is basically for me to compete against myself. It's for me to feel as though I trust myself. I'm confident in myself. So basically the choice I had was to take myself as my own inspiration, my own motivator, or external motivation, which is where I let other people, I, rely, I hunt to be seen to be a success by other people, and that's my motivator. Now depending on which one I choose, fundamentally impacts my glorious bells again. Hopefully I'll just carry on like I normally do. <laughs> they always come on when I've got a video. <laughs> Anyway, the, so the, I've got here so I can choose how, if I'm an external motivated or internally motivated, that fundamentally affects how I socialise. Obviously if I'm externally motivated, my socialising is going to be on finding people that I need them to see me as a success, a success, finding out what I need to do in order for them to see me as a success and then doing it. So I'm always externally comparing, looking at the successful people, trying to find out how they did it. Internally, I'm going to be socialising around constantly having to talk and chat and develop with people, have different experiences, to find out more about myself. Because I've got to build up a very strong sense of self so that I can actually understand what my motivators are, who I am, basically. So I chat to lots of people, constantly discovering, questioning, seeking out who I am, how I feel, and constantly keeping an eye out for when, for avoiding anybody telling me what to do. They can ask me to do things, but I must always respect the fact that it's my choice to do it, so I must protect my right to choose what I do. Otherwise, what can happen is I can lose myself in other people's thoughts. Okay, so there are two fundamentally different types of socialising emerge based on which type of motivation I pick. Now when I was a kid, subconsciously, I picked this one. I then spent the rest of my life socialising around how to develop a strong sense of self. Okay? And then what we're saying is on Respect Exchange, we can teach people and show people how to socialise using an internal motivation. The nine traits that I've written down help me are the ones that I've used throughout my life to socialise to develop who I am. And we've got five bad traits, which are essentially good traits if you're an external motivator, but when you're trying to do internal motivating, they're bad. And those are the traits. We teach nine good traits to follow when you socialise and five bad traits to avoid only when you're internally motivated. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, and I hope you feel inspired to make your own choice as to where to get your motivation from, and therefore how to drive your socialising. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.